Good morning and welcome to session A of the 2020, uh, 2021 Educational Technology Conference here in Palm Beach County. Um, this morning I have the pleasure of introducing you to Mr. Chuck Tuck from Aver. Um, before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and run through a few housekeeping um, tidbits. Um, please remember that while you are live on uh, YouTube, you can use the chat in YouTube to communicate. And please, while you're watching the video, remember to like and subscribe. And if you do by chance see any users in the chat with wrenches, they are our moderators. So if you have any specific questions for the Palm Beach County team, you could chat at those moderators and they can answer questions for you. So thank you for that. And with that, I would like to formally introduce you all to Chuck Tuck from Aver, who's going to be taking us through the uh, Aver document cameras for beginners. Welcome and thank you, Chuck. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I don't know if anybody out there is on the West Coast like I am, so I'm a little bit earlier than all of you folks. So today what I'd like to do is just go through really an introduction, really a beginner's course on using the Sphere 2 software. Now for, I think, almost all of you folks out there with uh, Palm Beach County, Palm Beach, you folks probably have the U50 or the U70, U70 Plus document camera. I have the U70 Plus connected to the Sphere 2 software. So when we get into the live portion, that's what I'll be using. And again, remember later on this afternoon, we'll have an advanced uh, section. And the advanced section is gonna be similar to this, but I'll dive a little bit deeper into uh, the use of the document camera and the Sphere 2 software in a live situation. So without further ado, let me go through this uh, PDF and we'll talk about the Sphere 2 software. So the Sphere 2 software is by no means is a new software, but it is a widely used software. So as it says, it is it was released back in 2015, but it is still currently being widely used in 2021. So the Sphere 2 is a standalone uh, AVER software for PC and Mac, and it gives um, users an access to many handy features like video recording, picture in picture, and annotation, uh, as well as a number of unique and advanced features like an automatic image correction. You've got your side by side comparison mode. Uh, you also can build up a personalized media library. So that just means that if I'm capturing images or creating video content, I can house them in a specific folder uh, that's connected directly with the Sphere 2 software. So as it says, it's it's really a simple to use software. The layout is pretty clean and it says it could take only minutes to learn, but you know, it might take some of us like myself, it just took a few more minutes than just a minute or two. Uh, so hopefully you've used it or hopefully you've seen it. And if you haven't, it is a free download on the averusa.com slash education website. Now the Sphere 2 is also available for tablets. So it's available on the iOS and Android tablet uh, platform. Uh, however, if some of you out there are going to use that, it does have some limited features. So it won't be as robust as using your uh, say your U70, U70 Plus, or U50 document camera. So just keep that in mind. If you see somebody using it and it looks a little different because you're using a tablet or because they were, that would be the reason for it. So the Sphere 2 software uh, does have some really easy to use controls. Like I said, it's, it's laid out fairly easy. So in this diagram or this picture here, you're gonna notice down at the, the bottom row here, these are gonna be your main functionalities for your document camera. So, you know, as an example, you might have an autofocus button uh, on your U70 Plus, but you don't have to touch the autofocus button on the document camera itself. You're gonna have it within the row of icons down here. And again, right now I'm just showing you a layout on the uh, PowerPoint presentation or PDF presentation. So when we get into the live mode, I'll be able to just show you that uh, in a live situation. So as it says here, the software really gives you access to all the camera's main functions, such as again, zoom, your focus, the freeze, 
rotate, and you have control over the images as well. So you can do adjustments such as uh, the brightness, the contrast, the color, and the white balance. Now it says mode, and then when I go into the mode part, you'll see that on the U50, U70, U Plus document cameras, you're only really going to have the one mode. Uh, and that you just have to leave it there and not even worry about it. So, and I'll explain a little bit more about the mode when we get there in the live session. Okay. And so some of the other advanced features, you're able to, as an example, if you put something down and it's just skewed just a little bit, you can hit auto and it'll actually straighten that out. But as it shows here, if it's off more than 15 degrees, it won't straighten it out 100%. So it's just off by 15 degrees and you use the auto straighten mode, it'll auto straighten everything out. Uh, me personally, I tend not to use that. Um, once I have my document camera down in place and my software running, I just keep a piece of paper down, taped down to my desk and I know right where it is for it to be squared up. So that way I don't have to really use it. So some of you might want to think about doing that. Um, if you don't want to put a sheet of paper down on your desk and cover up the whole thing, you can always just do uh, tape and outline where your document camera can be placed and where your um, worksheets would be placed. So now this does have picture in picture mode. So it is different from the side by side comparison. So again, I'll be able to show you that. And a lot of people actually did not even know about this feature, even though it is just being shown right, right on this control surface. Just if you're following my pointer, uh, the picture in picture, the actual picture in picture is these functions right up here. So the icons up here is going to control your um, picture in picture mode. Okay. So as it says, stream live video from uh, a second camera and that again is if we're doing a picture in picture mode you're going to be able to have uh, a second video live so that might be as an example a, a webcam i won't be able to use my webcam to show you this because the webcam is already being used by a different platform but i have another camera connected so you'll be able to see two cameras live and when i mean two cameras it would be the document camera, and then my other camera is going to be live. So, and then the media library that you're going to be able to build. Now, on the software itself, you're going to see this icon or some boxes, uh, nine boxes, and it's going to be off to the left. Just by clicking that, that's going to open up your library, and you can probably see that it says image, video, and then search. So keep in mind on um, when you uh, build these libraries and you hit save, you know, it might show just the uh, the date and time and things like that or, or different um, uh, prefix. If you actually name them something specific, when you use the search button, it'll actually be able to look for that. So keep that in mind again. So again, if you capture images, and you just save it, it may just save it as at uh, the date. But if you want to be able to search for it and you have different categories, go ahead and, and name it. That way, when you do your search, it's a bit easier to find uh, your different images or videos that you have captured and saved. So that, you guys, is a, is a very helpful tip. Trust me, because if you end up taking and capturing a lot of images, you may end up sitting there for a couple of minutes searching and trying to find where is it, what is it. And with the icons being a little bit small, it might be a little bit difficult to, to actually visually to see where they're at. Just to give you a quick example, maybe you might put math uh, one or math page one or something like that. So just keep that in mind once again. Remember to label things whenever you capture and save. Okay. Uh, as it says here, you're able to create your own media library. So again, it's just all of your videos and images that you capture, and it's using just the Sphere 2 software. So again, you can capture images, you can capture video. Now, what if you want to quickly be able to share this or post it? Well, you do have some ability to do that. So within the software, you can actually connect it to uh, your Google Drive, your Google account, your, and then over to, I believe, YouTube, and then an FTP. 
So it does, we don't have these others like the Dropbox or a Twitter or anything like that or Facebook, but you do have, as I mentioned, your Google Drive is a big one that you can use and you can upload it directly to there. And then if you are working in a remote situation, a hybrid situation, students, if they have um, access to Dropbox or excuse me, to uh, the Google Drive, they could immediately pick up that worksheet that you've been working on underneath the document camera or whatever the images that you've captured and shared. So keep that one in mind as well. And that's just giving us an example there, telling us what we can use to share. Uh, as it says, there's a handy annotation tool as well. So again, on the bottom row of icons, when we go live, you're going to see that it's got the camera, it's got your annotation tool, it's going to have your video recording, your capture, and then a, a couple of little features here that I'm going to get into right when we go live. Moving on down the screen, here's a really neat one too. As an example, if I'm using my document camera as a webcam and I have it facing towards maybe a guest speaker um, or guest lecturer, and that document camera is showing up there, I can use my annotation tools to annotate over top of that video live. So if I want to record it, I can do the same thing as well. I can record and annotate over top of it. So that's a really neat feature. So that's something where you can think about content creation. Or if you have a student maybe that gets up in the front of the classroom and you just want to use your document camera to capture them, uh, whether it be a still image or video, again, you can do that. And then keep in mind, you can actually annotate over top of that as well. And then that last feature on the bottom right, just a couple little features here. So you're able to highlight or just put a circle around so it'll focus in on an area that you want to be able to have the students to uh, concentrate on. So you might be saying, well, Chuck, what's that good for? What am I going to use that? Well, one of the biggest things is going to be for uh, geography or maps. You know, you want to be able to use the transparent or semi-transparent background so they can see the entire map. And then you can have them look within that window and they can specifically see what's uh, being shown. So that's not going to be highlighted. And you can turn that into a, a circle or an oval or a square. So a couple of different shapes. And then you could control the size as well. It works great if you're doing with vocabulary or math as well. And then there's one other feature on here. It's going to be like a reveal. So it's a digital reveal. So if some of you recall, remember the days we used to reveal line by line. We just put down a sheet of paper and use our overhead projector. And we just pull down the sheet. Well, this will do it digitally. So again, I'll show you that when we go into the live portion here. And this is just showing a little bit more when we're getting into uh, your recording. So again, on the recording, I can record or capture images. You can capture images. It's going to be a still image, or you can actually do a time lapse. So time lapse is pretty good if you're going to do anything in the biology or the sciences. So you can do anything anywhere from, say, oh, every five seconds for the next uh, minute, or you could go every second all the way up to the next 72 hours. So just be consecutive, just capturing image after image after image. So that's something that's really useful in a uh, science or biology classroom. Or if you have any curiosity as to, you know, what is happening over the weekend outside of the classroom window, well, you can set this up. And you can hit that to record or not record, but to capture uh, continuous images, it'll take a snapshot. So if you say every second, well, whatever one second times, you know, 72 hours is, that's how many photos you're going to have when you get back. So make sure you put them into a folder and don't have them just go all over your desktop or something like that, because you it'll be cluttered with images when you get back on Monday. And again, I'll go through all that and I'll show you uh, all those different features. Now, this is something that I was going to go into a little bit later, but uh, just so you know that when you download the A plus uh, suite of software, which has the Sphere 2 software, it will actually include a plugin for your PowerPoint if you want to use that. Uh, that's going a little bit more advanced. We don't really need to do that. Uh, it does have a floating toolbox, which actually gives you the control over 
you know, taking pictures or videos and things like that within your uh, PowerPoint presentation. Okay. And it's just giving us or letting us know that that's what you can do here. So you do have all of the features. Again, you could capture images, uh, videos, you can freeze frame any one of that. And again, most of this stuff that I'm just showing you right here is really just going into an advanced mode. So I'm just going to go past this. We are coming right up to the end of the presentation part as far as the slides go. Now we're going into the live. I don't know if you have any questions, but please uh, feel free to put in that chat box for any questions. Yeah. I would try to answer some of those. Hey, check. Actually, we, we do have one question, and I think Trent uh, might be helping out in the chat. But it says, just out of curiosity, when you add to the Avery Media Library, does it save to the desktop's hard drive or to the document camera itself like it did on the F50? Ah, good question on that. It will actually save it to the to the computer itself. And you'll be able to designate um, if you have multiple drives or if you have a specific folder that you want to save it. And I'll be sure to go through that on the live portion. So thank you for that question. Thank you. Let's see. Any other questions coming up? Uh, nope, but we are monitoring and we will let you know. Thank you. All right. All right, folks. I'll go ahead and switch over to the Sphere 2. And hopefully you're able to see this. So this pops up. Let me minimize that. And I'm going to open full screen here. Looks good. All right. So I already have my document camera launched. So this is a live image. And again, I am using the U70 plus document camera, which I believe with uh, with Palm Springs, it's the U50, U70, U70 plus is pretty much um, uh, across the board. So if you're using a different document camera, uh, it's going to be the same image. You're going to see the same thing. And the, the icons down at the bottom will be the same. So let's go ahead and start from the very, very top. Again, remember, this is just a beginner course. So I may not be going into showing you every single thing in detail, but I would do my best to show you a complete working of a beginner going into using Sphere 2. The first thing, if, if you happen to have Sphere 2 already loaded on your computer and you haven't used it in a while, I always go to the About Sphere 2. If you click on that, you can actually check for updates right here. So this is a good place to start just to make sure that it is updated. So be sure to do that. Once you've done that and you've uh, been sure that it is up to date, let's take a look at a couple of other things here. So under options, this is where we're going to go if we want to save it to a specific area, uh, a folder or something like that on your computer. So here again, you can use whatever prefix that you want to. Uh, if you want to put class one or whatever it might be, go ahead and put that right here for the prefix. Now on the on the suffix on the end, you know, it shows the minutes, date, hours, uh, the year. You could change that around a little bit. The reason that we have it nailed down is the minutes, the date, the year, the hours, the minutes, the seconds, is if you're doing that um, continuous photo, so we're doing that time-lapse photography. This is fantastic because it tells you exactly down to that second, you know, what is happening here. So as an example on that, if some of you recall, remember when we used to take a string and pencil, lay it across, we put down, what is it? I can't even remember, sugar, salt. But if we want to see it crystallize uh, over, over the weekend. Or, you know, if you want to watch a, a chicken hatch from an egg, you could do this here and it'll show you by the hours, minutes, and seconds exactly what is happening at that time. So again, this is really great for those biology uh, science classrooms, okay? And this is the example that's going to have. So if I put BIO, it's going to show BIO. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and change that to BIO. And you know, once I update everything, that's what your title is going to look like. It'll say BIO. Now, location. Here is where you can specifically save into a folder. I suggest that if you're going to do something like a time-lapse photography, and if you're going to have it for, you know, 
uh, 24, 48, 72 hours, and you're going to capture an image every second. I would go in here and I would personally, I would make a specific folder for that because there are going to be so many images. So this is where you're going to go and you're going to select where it is on the computer that you want to save the images. So uh, if you, again, if you have any place specific, be sure to do that. Or if you're going to be saving it to um, a thumb drive of some sort, make sure that you designate that it's going to be saved on that thumb drive so it can be portable for you so you can take it to uh, your next class or, or home or wherever or whatever you want to do. Uh, file format. You know, you do have your TIFF, your PNG, and your bitmaps. For the most part, uh, I I suggest leaving on the JPEG. It's most widely used. Uh, it'll open up in any you know any uh, picture viewer. So JPEG is really good. Uh, it is. It does a great job of compressing the image to the file size, so it's not going to be overly large and things like that. So um, you do have your choice, though. Okay, and right here. Always save captured images in a hard disk. So if I don't want to save it to the hard disk, you know where I'm telling it here, uncheck that. And then this just says that whenever I capture the images for it to open up immediately, you don't have to have that. Sometimes if you do capture that image or the video and you have that checked, it's going to automatically pop up as soon as you take a picture, you know, a second later pops up. That might be an interference for you, especially if you're capturing a lot of worksheets and you're using this for content creation. So you can keep that unchecked. Video, all the same thing right here. Now, I'm, I can select my microphone, the hours, minutes, and seconds, MP4 or AVI. On this, folks, leave it on MP4. It is a good compression for uh, reducing the size of the video. AVI is going to be much larger, uh, so it'll take up more space on your hard drive. Uh, AVI might be a little bit better in image quality, but MP4 is going to be perfect. Uh, again, your file location right here. I'm going to start going a little bit faster so I don't run out of time. Image setting. Now, you notice that I have your straight image, your white balance, your exposure, contrast, all this, and I only have my white balance and exposure checked. Uh, I, I, again, me personally, I don't do the straighten the image because if I put it down, if it's 16 degrees off, it's not going to put it exactly where I need it and it's going to try. So I leave that unchecked and that way I control everything as far as, you know, the angle of where my document is. Uh, contrast, I like to leave that unchecked because I don't know what the, the lighting situation and things like that is going to be. So I like to just keep that off, unchecked. Uh, for Flickr, we're here in the States, just go ahead and use the 60 hertz. But you can make any of your adjustments and changes here if you like. Now, when you come over to camera setting, most everything that you see here is going to pertain to a wireless document camera. So you folks are not using that, where you can see the IP address for the camera and so on and for so forth. Right here, though, USB cam and wireless firmware upgrade. You can always check setting. It's going to bring you over to see if, you know, if there has been an update for a document camera that you have connected. It's going to name it right here. As you see that this is the U70 Plus, uh, my current version, it's a free status, and it's not highlighted. So there's no upgrade. Uh, I'm up to date on this. So that's kind of an important one, too. So some of these things think about as troubleshooting. If for some reason something doesn't, it's not working quite right. Make sure your Sphere 2 is updated and make sure your document camera firmware is updated. Now this last row of this last icon up here is for the upload. So right here again, you've got your Google Drive, you got your YouTube and FTP. Currently I have, uh, my Google Drive is linked. So if you're gonna link something, again, it's just a matter of click on link, it's going to bring up a, a, a window and it's going to ask you permission that you, that you can link to that uh, that platform. And then that's where you give it permission. You sign in and do everything. So just go ahead and get out of there. All right. So I'm just going to click cancel for any change I've made. I don't want to save it. Now, the rest of this stuff up here is just your 
viewing? Do you want to go full screen? You know, uh, do you want to see your media library, your resolution? So if you see where it says HFR, uh, high frame rate, I just leave it on that. There's almost no difference between this one and uh, the standard. But if you're moving, you really shouldn't see that much of a delay at all. So the HFR is going to be your best. Keep it there. Uh, languages, you have all those different languages. And the print mode if you want to print what's on screen. So I won't click exit because it'll take us right out of the software. All right, so let's go ahead and start down at the bottom here. Uh, before I get to that, uh, has there been any questions that's come up? Uh, not since we last spoke. Okay, fantastic. Uh, remember, folks, if, there are, if you do have any questions, please go ahead and put it in that chat, and we'll get to that. All right, so down here, you saw this on the, uh, the picture on the PDF. So right now, this is the camera control. If I was to click on that, uh, it gives me the ability to freeze frame. Now, this is something that a lot of people forget about using, but freeze frame is really, really great because, as an example, if, if I'm pointing to this letter or this word and I freeze frame, uh, I say, all right, kids, find the word that's in this line or what, you know, what problem is the answer to, you know, to this or whatever it might be. And then I say, well, no, it was actually um up here so uh the freeze frame again is a very very simple feature to use but it is something that's really cool and it, it'll, it'll definitely come in handy for all of you uh the focus mode so if i put my hand let's see right here i hit my autofocus so i'm really close to the document camera but this is your autofocus so again you do not even need to touch your document camera so if for example, your document camera is three feet away from your desk. You don't have to get up and go there to do any of this stuff. So you could control it right here. All right. And so this is just going to be for the auto adjust. So this is it just auto adjusts everything. So your white balance and things like that. Uh, this is where I can zoom in. And you see, it does a really good job as far as keeping it, the image clear. So we are really zoomed in. And even more, and we'll come back out here. So if I was zoomed all the way in, if I want to come back out really quick, just hit that. So it brings us right back to 100%. Also, you can use your document camera head. Depends on the height where you have it. That's going to be able to show more or less of your document if you want. So this over here, these are very simple. Just rotate. And this is just going to be rotating in the reverse direction. So you might say, okay, great, Chuck. I can rotate. So what? Well, think about it this way. We have limited real estate on our desks as educators. And we might have to put our document upside down to us or the document camera might be facing the other way. So this is when you're going to use that rotate. So you're able to rotate so it looks straight for the viewers or it looks straight when you are recording or doing capture of images. So um, this comes in handy again if you have limited space on your desk and if you have to turn things 45, 90 degrees. On this one right here, so let me go back. This, if I click here, so these are just all the image adjustments. So here's where I could go in and manually adjust my, my brightness, uh, my contrast, you know, as I mentioned, that I, I like to sometimes come in here and do it manually. You can see where it's changing. So the contrast. Okay. So this is where you're going to go to change uh, your image settings manually. Okay. And right in here, advanced or simple. This is just going to be if I want to add more blues or more reds uh, to the document, um, I, I can do that. So. Right now, sorry, it's checked on auto. There we go. So I could change the, the, the blue or the red tint. You might say, well, why would I want to do that? Well, if you're in any type of uh, art class or something creative like that and you want to add a tint to it, you can come here and do that. Uh, again, I pretty much say leave it on automatic so it looks just like this so you get the right colors. Okay. Uh, next one is just a manual focus. So why would you use manual focus? Well, as an example, if 
if I had a tower or something that's um, lifted up off of the, the desk or the surface that I'm trying to focus in on. So my worksheet, if I have something up here, I could manually focus in on this because if I was to try to do autofocus, it's, it may look at the larger picture and still continue focusing on the document down at the bottom. So if I need to manually focus on something, that's how you would do it. Some of the other reason manual focus is in the science and biology classes. If you're going through a, a glass beaker or something like that, and you will want to focus in on something in the center. Uh, so that'll work out well there. Okay, and just move along quickly here. Again, all this stuff, auto. So just keep it on auto. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a friend. Uh, your angle. So if you want to just slightly turn something, you can have twenty degree minus and plus, or just reset it. Okay. So that's if you want to do something just precise as far as uh, moving it one degree one way or the other. This right here is just going to allow you to go from color to a uh, black and white mode, which is on the very end, black and white. So high contrast. Again, now you can work with your brightness and your contrast. If you just have it on black and white, this works great for schematics. And then we have this mode, the negative mode. So sometimes with the negative mode, you'll notice that perhaps these image, the image under here, if it's black and white or text, it might be a little bit easier for uh, somebody that has a slight visually impairment uh, for them to read this. It jumps off the page a little bit, a little bit better. So just to give you a quick comparison again. So there's our regular way and there's the negative, okay? One thing, younger kids get a kick out of this, especially if you point it at your face or you put your hands down there. I'm going to go back to the full color mode. And then this last one right here is that mode. And as I mentioned, depending on the camera that you have, you can change mode. Right now, we just have the one mode. So typically, it might have a mode where it says uh, document or the running man for high frame rate. Or you might have uh, a, a microscope mode. But we don't have a microscope or attachment for this camera. So uh, there's no need for that. All right. Now, let me go ahead and come back up to the top here. And visualizer. Okay, that's that document camera that we have connected. It will automatically recognize that if the document camera is connected. Over to your far right, ignore this first one here. This is a feature that's not being used that we won't be using at all. Uh, visualizer, it tells me that I have just the one visualizer document camera connected. However, I did mention that you can do picture in picture and you might say, well, Chuck, how, how is it going to do picture in picture if it doesn't even know that there's no document camera connected? Well, it looks at the document camera different as it would as a webcam or another camera for picture in picture mode. So next to this document camera icon, you have this and this is actually the PIP picture in picture mode. Click that. Now you see that I have the USB cam. Uh, another USB cam, uh, my Aver VB130, uh, my camera that's on the laptop, or my DL. Uh, that's another auto tracking camera that we have. So let me just go ahead and click on this. And there it is. So now you should see a picture of this in the upper corner here. Okay. Now while I have this up, let me come back up here. So this we could control. Um, the full screen or not full screen. So our full screen view. If I want to escape that full screen, go ahead and hit escape. If I wanted to change this, uh, the PIP mode, make sure that I select a different camera and it'll just go to the other camera. So that's how you're going to change it. It's very limited in what you could do, but at least you still have this one live image and you have that second image and that image is actually live. And what you might notice is depending on your connection, if you're doing this, if you're streaming this, you know, it's gonna use a little bit more bandwidth because now you have two live cameras. So keep that in mind. So if I wanna close out of it, you see this little wheel here, I can reduce it, or I can make it larger, or I can actually 
cancel out of it. There's a little X and click that. Okay. So we're back to this live image. So I don't know if you noticed that when I had my hand down there, when I had that second window, it may have had a little bit more of a delay. So again, keep in mind that if you're having two cameras, it's going to use that much more um, bandwidth. So that's the reason why you may have some delay. Okay. So now let's take a look at some of these others. Again, the resolution, you do have control. Again, I do have this on the high frame rate, but you can reduce the resolution or you can go up in resolution. Okay. And again, this is going to just say, do I want to fit to the screen or do I want to go to the original size? It's it's just as quick and just as easy. Just use, you know, like a full screen if you want. But just to show you here, original size, it's just slightly different there or full screen. Okay. And I always use that escape uh, ESC and you could get right out of it. So just a couple more things for you on this uh, beginner course. And this is just going to be the icons over here. And then we'll be able to open it up to any type of questions that we might have. So the side by side mode. So on side by side, if I was to click that, what it's trying to do over here is you see where it says DL30. I don't have that camera turned on, but if I was to turn it on, let's see if I have my remote handy here. There it is. So yes, I have cameras all over the place. Uh, so now we have, once again, two live images and you see that there is a slight delay because I'm using two streaming, two live streaming modes. So it's taking up a little bit more bandwidth. If I wanted to change my source, I could change it over to my other camera. And once again, you still see that there is a little bit of the delay. Up above, you see where it says two camera? I can go to as many as three cameras. And you just introduce a little bit more delay if that's what you're going to do. But now you actually have three live cameras. Let me, I'll get up real quick and you'll see that it is live. So there I am. I'm all dressed in Aver. Everything's Aver today. Okay. Casual Friday, Aver Sports Attire. So this is a really neat feature if you want to do anything as far as uh, a live side-by-side -side comparison. So there's so many different things you could do with this with live mode. I'm going to just go back to one camera, and this is my document camera. And you see, once again, now there's not that delay. And that's, again, mainly due to the bandwidth uh, and using multiple streams. Okay, so now I can insert an image over here. Here's my media library. I didn't capture any images. Again, this is just the beginner one, but I do have images already captured and saved. So if I come up here with this box of nine squares, you see it says video and images. I'm just going to bring in an image. So I could just drop that right in there. If I want to make this window large again, come back up to those nine boxes, click that. I can actually resize, okay? I could come down here. You notice now my annotation tools have popped up. So I can annotate from the live all the way over to a captured image. So whatever I need to do. Now keep in mind though, now that I've selected my annotation tool, if I wanna be able to uh, move or adjust the size, I have to come over here and click. So now I could control and move the, the window size, resize the window. Now you notice that whatever I annotated is not going to change in size because that is right here. So what if I want to move whatever it is that I annotated? Right here is your selection tool or select object. So now I can move that around. So there's a lot of neat things again that you could do with this. So if I have, um, oh, say I have what says serial number or you know, uh, state or president or whatever it is, I can, I can move it from the live image over to the captured image. So I could say, you know, here's a serial number or whatever it might be. So it depends on what you're using, if you're using math or if you're using uh, language arts or anything like that. So you could lay down a lot of different things. If I wanted to um, 
lay down some text. I can now move that text around. Same with shapes and whatever it is. I can take my eraser tool, uh, erase one thing at a time. Uh, or, you know, if I wanted, if I had a whole lot of things on here, just use the broom, it'll erase everything. And I'm almost running out of time here. Give me just one more minute. I'm going to show you a couple of last things here, and then we'll get into uh, uh, the closing up of everything. So within each window, if I click here, you notice that there is a row of icons down at the bottom right, okay? So that just means that I can either delete or close out that window. I can expand that window, come back down here and reduce it again. I come over here and I can expand this, okay? I can now rotate this around. I can zoom in on my document, uh, let's see here. So here's what's really neat. So keep this in mind too, garbage in, garbage out. If your image is not in focus, the more you zoom in like this, it, the worse it's gonna look. Now I can actually, this is so cool. You can pan and scan around that document. So if I've captured and saved an, uh, an image, that is what I can do. So as opposed to come over here, open this up. And if I was to zoom in on this, there is no panning and scanning on the live image. Just keep that in mind. So it's whatever you have captured, you can pan and scan on. All right, I think we're coming really close to the end here. So uh, that is really it for the, the beginner session. And we'll be able to go over some other things during the, the session where, uh, for the advanced. So please come back again if you want to go and see what I'm gonna show you in the, the advanced mode. That's it for beginner's course. Wow, Chuck, that was jam-packed full. Thank you. Um, there is so much versatility, so many options. Uh, it is, it's so exciting to see how much the document cameras have come to the forefront of this digital classroom. Um, having been uh, lucky enough to get to watch what the teachers have done over the past several months, it's become so critical. And, um, you know, with these tools at, at their fingertips, it's just um, really exciting to see what they can do with them. So thank you. Um, as always, very, very clear and, and, and concise. Um, I don't think we had too many um, additional questions. We've got uh, thanks in the uh, chat and comments about how powerful the tools are, uh, but no specific questions. Um, and I do know, Chuck, that um, you know, we've got a really good support um, built in here at the district for questions. Um, so folks can reach out to the EdTech team or check the training sites here locally. Um, and uh, as always, would follow up with any questions that we might need to get to you. So uh, thank you so much for your time. Um, and to wrap this up, uh, uh, Danny, uh, final thoughts, Chuck? Uh, no, it's, well, yes. If you haven't used it or if you are afraid, do not be afraid. Just jump right in there and play with this. That's the only way any of us are going to learn how to use any of this stuff. And you're not going to mess it up. And as Jonathan said, that there's, there is support out there for you folks. So if you get stuck, uh, somebody there at the district or at your school can help you out. If not, reach out to me. Outstanding. Thanks, Chuck. All right, and to wrap up our session for today, I'm um, just going to give you guys a reminder. We have sessions um, all throughout the day. The next one is scheduled to start in just a few minutes at 11. Um, we certainly hope you're enjoying your time here at the Tech Conference this year. Uh, completely different venue, but the mission stays solid. We want to uh, be here side by side with everybody and keep bringing the great messages forward. Um, thank you guys for your time. And I'm going to go ahead and wrap us up and head us on out. So thanks again, Chuck. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much.